Philippians chapter 3 tonight, Philippians chapter 3, and so um, I've been I've been having uh, fun, I've been, the Lord's been giving me messages that uh, I'm learning things, and, uh, and uh, I don't always learn something new when I prepare for a sermon, but uh, you know, there's the, not that the Bible isn't endlessly things to learn, but just sometimes I've been over that ground before, but um, but, uh, you know, God's been speaking to me and giving me things that maybe I didn't know or didn't see in very familiar passages sometimes. And uh, so, um, again, that is the case tonight, um, Philippians chapter 3, and uh, <clears throat> let's see, let's hit verse 7 and start there and we'll go uh, forward uh, from there. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not uh, having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either uh, were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which uh, also I am apprehended in Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, in Christ Jesus. All right, let's pray together. Father, thank you for this passage, Lord. I'm sure I've read this to uh, this group of people and, and uh, preached around it and used verses in here, and it's a, a well-known, uh, great passage of Scripture, Father, probably one of the top 20 passages of Scriptures in the Bible, and we thank you for the all the great things it says and the, that you put it through a man um, to speak to us to see that this is the way you want uh, us to think and uh focus and live, and and uh, Lord, I pray that you would use this message tonight. I pray that we would understand being apprehended, and uh, you would help us, Lord. You'd speak to us. We need your help. We never uh, want to ever just come to a service and say, we have the building, we have the the Bible, we have the, the people, <clears throat> the training, uh, the pulpit, and so we'll be fine, Lord. We need your presence, you to speak to us, your blessing upon the service, and we pray for that tonight, and for you to speak to each one of us tonight. We pray for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Um, Paul had uh, lost everything, left everything, <clears throat> lost everything, um, and, uh, and he lost it to gain Christ and the things of Christ. Um, we see in verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. And you have to remember he lists that uh, before. Uh, in this uh, in this very passage and uh, in other passages, he talks about, hey, uh, uh, if anyone thinks he can be in the flesh, uh, you know, and, and have confidence in it, I more, you know, he says, I've, I, I had the great education, I had the great background, I had the reputation, I had everything, um, but but I lost it all, um, and all of it meant nothing, and I've lost everything, I've suffered the loss of all things, he says, and he doesn't regret it, he doesn't pout, and that's very important because sometimes. Um, I've seen Christians kind of uh, when they when they suffer for the cause of Christ or because they're they're changing or because God's working their life, they kind of get pouty about it. Well, I went through this and why didn't God do this for me? Instead of understanding the privilege of suffering for Christ. Philippians 1, I think it's verse 29. Uh, it says, for it is given unto you on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. And it's, a, it's an honor. It's a privilege. And he was glad to give those things up for Christ. And, uh, and, 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 and he said, I count them but dung. They're nothing compared to serving God. And I suffer the loss so I can gain the things of Christ. I lost my things. I, I set them aside. And now I'm, I'm getting the things of Christ in my life, the things that God wants. And, uh, and, and he has those. And he starts listing those things off. Um, and, and there's a list of things here. And, and I, it certainly could be a different message, but I'll just, I'll just list them. <clears throat> he said, first of all, um, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Um, verse 8, Yea, doubtless I get all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. It says it again. Literally everything. 
and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. The second thing is that he would win Christ. Um, he would uh, 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 get Christ and have uh, Christ be happy with him. It, it, that winning Christ is a phrase you probably wouldn't understand if, if you're younger because it's not done much. But a man used to have to win a woman um, uh, to get her um, and win her over and uh, and, 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 to, and he had to take actions. He might be competing with another guy, and, uh, and, and he had to buy nicer flowers and, uh, and be kinder and all the different things. Um, and by the way, you say women would want that. Oh, women would like that today. And uh, uh, women would like uh, 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 men that, that, that pursued them. Unfortunately, uh, we, we don't have men anymore, and they wait for the woman and say, is it okay if I ask you out? Can you can you ask me out? And uh, and uh, um, because that's the kind of uh, males we have today. Um, but <clears throat> um, but uh, um, but but that I may win Christ. Is I want to win Christ. I want to get Him. I want Christ and I to be close. And I've lost all things. And I want the excellency, the real knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. I want to win Christ. And then He says, I want to be found in Him. When he comes, I want to be right there with him. I want to be found close to Christ, in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. We'll read that verse a little later. Uh, 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 John 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, close to God. Being found in Christ. I, want to, I don't want to be found around Christ. I don't want to be found at church where Christ is. I want to be found in Christ. He says, I'm suffered the loss of all things for these things. He's listing off the things that he's lost. That he's, he lost everything, but he says, I'm good. I've lost these things so I can get these things. Okay? I, I made a trade in. And, 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 and the things I'm getting back are far greater. And that's uh, what, uh, what I'm doing here. <clears throat> um, where are we? Um, and we found in him verse, uh, uh, verse 9. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and so it would be found in him and then um, to know him. Um, and in verse 9 talks about being found in him, uh, not having my own righteousness, salvation righteousness through, through Christ. Uh, verse 10, that I may know him. Wow. He said, I'm not going to know God when I'm entangled with this world. That I may know him. I want to know God. And that's one of the most important things in the Bible. That I may know him. Do you know God? Not do you know about him. Right? I know about Joe Biden. I don't know Joe Biden. A lot of people know about God, but they don't know God. And he says, I've, I've suffered the loss of all things that I may know him. He says, I, I, did, I couldn't have kept all those things and known him. I had to lose those things to get to know him. And sometimes the things you have to go through, some of those things, God has to strip them away so he can give you something better. He has to, he has to say, you know what? I will buy you a new set of clothes and you throw those nasty things you're wearing away. If you'll quit driving that junky car, I'll buy you a new car. But I, I, you can't drive two cars. And, and, and I, I, I don't want you to have that one anymore. I got something better for you. That I may know him. And then, and the power of resurrection. I want to know him, and I want to know the power of his resurrection. When you die to yourself, you, you, uh, you, you, when you mortify the deeds of your body, as the Bible says, you get the power of his resurrection. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. At Romans 8 earlier, uh, Galatians 2.20. 2 um, uh, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I, you, you don't know the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which you get. You get the power of the resurrection when you die to yourself. No death, no resurrection. There's a power in the resurrection. Romans 8 uh, says uh, that we die to ourselves and we live unto God. So you got to have that death to self, and then you get the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And you can read Romans 8. It's like verse 6 through 15 or so. It'll tell you about that and the power of the resurrection. He says, I want that, and I've suffered the loss of all things, uh, being made conformable unto his death. The end of verse 10. It says here, I've lost all things that I can know these things, um, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. And that's where he starts off at. Then he speaks about, <clears throat> um, um, uh, he speaks about how he wanted to be apprehended. And you're going to see this word apprehended used a few times. I never, the, the phrase started floating around my mind. I don't think I've ever memorized this passage on purpose, um, but just over time and 
to familiarity. I, I know it pretty well. I don't think I have a word for it memorized, but pretty close. And, and, and the phrase kept on uh, uh, coming to mind that I may apprehend that for which I'm apprehended. And I kept on getting that phrase and kind of saying, what, what is that saying there? And I started just thinking about that, that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended. That's so kind of wordy there. What in the world is that talking about? I've never heard anybody teach on that or preach on that. And, and the title of the message is Apprehend What You're Apprehended For. Apprehend What You're Apprehended For. When you think of the word apprehend, what do you think of? Anybody want to give me an answer there? What do you think of apprehend? Matthew? Okay, like arresting someone, catching somebody who's wanted by the police. Yep. Anybody else? Yes? What's that? To understand, okay, all right, good. See, you can tell by their life experience what they th- they, they think it is, right? And uh, and so, um, but uh, uh, education and crime. And uh, but uh, yes, sir. <coughs> Caught up in, okay. I I, I want to give you the word, and the word I'm going to give you the word how it's used throughout the Bible. I'm going to define the word, the, the, the actual definition. I'm going to give you it throughout the Bible. I'm going to put it all together and give you a word, a, f- a word that we use today that would help you understand it, okay? Um, because uh, you guys aren't far off. Um, apprehend. Um, uh, the word in the Bible is katal uh, uh, umkan. It's, uh, it's, uh, let, me, let me try it again. I'll get the whole word. Cat al umbano. Let me try it again. Cat un Umbano. I'm glad I don't have to speak Greek. <laughs> and uh, so, um, the word means to take eagerly. That's the actual definition uh, in the ancient word there. To take eagerly, like some of you do with donuts, for example. You apprehend your donut, okay? And, uh, and, and you get that quickly. Um, when, you, when you get that, um, but it goes a little farther than that. Some other parts of the word. There's two words, but it's a compound word. Two, word, two Greek words put together. Um, <clears throat> it means to seize, to possess, and then sometimes to comprehend, which was kind of mentioned there, to obtain, to perceive. Okay, let me give you some Bible examples of this word. So you get a Greek word, a word in the Greek, and then you go to different passages throughout the Bible, and it's translated into English, but the contexts are all different. So when you do that, I, I a lot of times get a better picture of the word because you see how, with the experts and who are fluent in Greek, um, the, the translated the King James, um, you find out that, that, that exactly how the word, because you can, you can take a word in the English and it comes out many different ways, and it's a more broad than just, just one thing. And uh, like if I said the word strong, depends on who you are and what you're thinking about. Okay, it could be smell, could be could be uh, physical, uh, it could be uh, 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 an emotional thing, it could be a lot of things. And so I'm going to give you some verses that use this same Greek word as the word apprehend here, because the word apprehend is used three times in this passage, right in a row, and, and, and it's, it's used in a fascinating way, and I want to give you that word. So let's go back to Mark chapter 9, so I can... So we can get a little bit better context of what this word apprehend. Because a phrase we're looking at, it says uh, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And uh, it's kind of an interesting phrase there. And I want to be able to get and understand it. So we'll we'll dig into it a little bit here in in, uh, Mark chapter 9 and verse 18. It says, whithersoever he taketh him, and teareth him, and he is a possessed child, and foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth. That word, taketh him, um, that's the same word as apprehend. This demon takes his child places. He's, he, he is possessed. He's apprehended. Okay? But that word, taketh, is the same Greek word. Wherever the demon takes him, he does all these things to him. So it's you, 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 you're, you're in possession of something and taking it somewhere. You grasp it, and, uh, and you grab that child. He, this demon owned that child. Let's go to the book of John. I'll just do a few in John that are, that are much different, and start in John 1, that are uh, nearby each other, so we can just uh, stay in the book of John. Uh, John chapter 1 and verse 5. <coughs> And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness, co- darkness comprehended it not. That is the world, word comprehended. 
is the same word as as uh, apprehend. Okay, so there it's 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 the light was shining in the darkness, and the darkness had no idea and did not did not comprehend that the Son of God was among them. Okay, and uh, and uh, and so the darkness comprehended it not. That's the word comprehend is the way it comes out in that verse, and uh, and so we can uh, 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 see that that verse there. Let's go to uh, um, oh, let's see. Let's look at verse nine. <coughs> It says, uh, he was that light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Let me see if I got the right verse written down here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go to chapter 2. And uh, let me give you chapter 2. And uh, verse 10. Make sure I got my right verses here. And uh, if I can read my writing, that's actually the problem. And uh, chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, and saith unto him, every man... Um, at the beginning, uh, does set forth good wine, and when he hath, I don't know, that's not the right verse. Um, let me try, chapter, I got a lot of verses written here, and let me, let me see if I got the right verse, chapter, let me just check the next one, and uh, let me find it here. Um, yeah, okay, it's uh, uh, Matthew, uh, uh, John chapter 3, and verse uh, it started verse 10. Jesus answered and said to him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Um, Verily I say unto you that we, we say that we know and we testify that we have seen, and we receive not our witness. So you see that uh, knowest not these things. And, and you see that it's used in a few different ways here. Let's go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. <clears throat> John chapter 12. And verse uh, 35, John chapter 12 and verse 35, Jesus said a little while, uh, a little while and the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest the darkness come upon you. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, um, for that which, uh, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. The phrase there that it comes out is knoweth not knoweth in there we see that it's very he, 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 he i'm sorry it's the phrase come upon you less than darkness come upon you so the darkness is overtaking you it's over overtaking you and then one more let me give you john chapter eight so the word uh there in that phrase is come upon you in john chapter eight and we'll go back to uh verse uh three and four and the scribes and pharisees um, brought uh, him a woman taken in adultery. That's the word taken is the same word. So it comes out as uh, uh, comprehending. It comes uh, out as uh, taketh him. It comes out as come upon you, lest the darkness come upon you. It comes out in this verse, in these two verses, in verse 4 again, it says, A master, this woman is taken in adultery. She was grabbed while she's caught in adultery. She was apprehended. So we've got comprehend. Uh, we've got, <clears throat> um, we've got uh, 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 taken. Um, we've got, uh, we've got uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to comprehend, taken, perceived. And uh, different, different, all these different things, and come upon you. So, with all these different words, we can kind of put them together and 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 apprehend. And look at that word. And really, the one thing you'd get is the word that I would say is the word grasp, because it's physically grasping something and it's mentally grasping something. It's taken. It's comprehending. It, it's 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 uh, it's taking you over. It's uh, being overtaken by something. It's being grabbed by something. It's all those different things. And, and so we see when we see, let me we'll do one more. Let's go to the book of Acts. And uh, chapter 10. I'm just trying to give you a, a bunch of different verses here. And uh, <clears throat> they, they talk about this. In chapter 10 and verse 34, Peter's talking here. And, and he gets it finally. Then Peter has opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. All of a sudden, the Gentiles are getting saved, and he says, Whoa, I have 
perceive. There's the word. The word perceive is the same word of apprehend. I grasp this truth. Okay? Uh, so it's grabbing something. It's taking something. It is comprehending. It's also your mind. You know when you find, oh, I get it. It's all those things. It's used, it's, it can be used in a wide variety of things from being demon possessed to understanding the truth of God. But it's all of a sudden you grasp something. And that, that's really um, the, what, the, what the word really means uh, when we look at it there. So let's go back to Philippians chapter 3 and, and look at this passage and see what, it, what he's trying to say here. As you, as you, as you look at this word apprehended. <coughs> he says, verse 12, for though, uh, <coughs> not as though I had already apprehend, either were appreh- apprehended or either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended in Jesus Christ. He says, I've not already attained. I'm not there yet. We'll get to that in a moment. <coughs> but he says, I'm not there yet, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended in Christ Jesus. What, what is he saying there? What does that mean? It's, it's, Paul, let me give you just a couple thoughts here. Number one, Paul had been apprehended by Jesus for something. <coughs> he said, look, I have not apprehended, I've not gotten a hold of that which I was apprehended for. You see how it's phrased there? I was apprehended by Christ for something. But I haven't apprehended. I haven't gotten that yet. I haven't got all the way there. He apprehended me so I would be here, do this. But I haven't, I haven't, I haven't apprehended it yet. I haven't gotten what God saved me for. What he grasped me for. What he, he's taken me for. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't gotten there yet, but he's got me for a reason. And every single one of us was saved for a reason. You were apprehended by God. And that's for a purpose. Everybody. I think we think, oh yeah, the preacher and the prophet and the, yeah, we get that. But no, God apprehended you. He sought you out and he formed you in the womb. Psalm 139, Jeremiah 1. He, he formed you. He grabbed you. He took you. Now, y- you said yes. He did that. He's trying to apprehend everybody. But when he apprehended you and you said yes, he apprehended you and said, I've got a plan. I'm going to make you into something. I want you to become, I want you to do something. And Paul says, I've suffered the loss of all things. And, and, and Christ, I'm not there yet. But I'm seeking after that I may apprehend that for which I was apprehended. The way God captured me, I'm trying to capture what he has for me. And, and, and that's for all of us. <clears throat> A good, get some good passage on this. Is just uh, well, Let's look at Paul. Let's, get, let's go to Acts um, chapter uh, 26. <clears throat> look at Paul was apprehended for a purpose. Acts 26, and Paul's given his testimony. And verse 15, it says, uh, and he's given his testimony of the Damascus road, and said, Who art thou, uh, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest, persecutest, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Wow, I've got a purpose. Uh, I have appeared to you for a reason. Um, to make thee... A minister and a witness, both of those things which thou hast seen, and of those things which I will, which uh, which I will, uh, in the which I will appear unto thee, <coughs> delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom uh, now I send thee. Whoa, the Gentiles? God said, "Yeah, you're going to be an apostle of the Gentiles." I'm going to deliver you when they come to get you and try to kill you, and I'm going to send you to the Gentiles. You're going to take the gospel where nobody's taken it before. You're going to take it to a new people. You're going to take it out of Israel, and you're going to do that. I've, I've apprehended you for that. Paul, that's why you're supposed to do, and that's your job. 
um, verse 18, to open the eyes, uh, 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 to, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Wow, what a, what a purpose he has, amen? And, uh, and God has a purpose for him and, uh, and for all those things and uh, that they may perceive, uh, receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith uh, that is in me. He says, look, Paul, I have appeared to you for this purpose, and he gives him a purpose of taking the gospel of Gentiles, delivering people from darkness to light, to teach them salvation. And he had this purpose. He was apprehended for that reason. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 talks about the purposes of God a lot. Ephesians 1 could be the deepest chapter in the entire Bible. So when you read Ephesians chapter 1, don't try to read it verse by verse. Read it sentence by sentences. The sentences are extremely long and very, very deep in the purposes of God. And uh, <clears throat> um, But I'll just give you a few uh, uh, verses here in, uh, about the purposes of God in people. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame uh, with him in love, having predestinated us according to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ uh, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory and his grace, wherein as he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. God purposed in himself a plan for us, and he does it according to his good pleasure, and he says he's made into the, known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure. And so he's got a plan, and God's got things uh, that he um, wants to do, and he wants to work in us. <clears throat> um, uh, verse 11, in whom we also have obtained an inheritance, being uh, predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. God's got a plan. <laughs> and it's pretty strong there. Chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained we should walk in them. Do you see all the things about God's plan for us from before the world? So all these verses are talking about God's got a plan, and he's, we're his workmanship, and he's going to make us into something. He's got a plan. Chapter 3 and verse <clears throat> 11. According as... Uh, According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Um, do you see the purpose of God, the plan of God? God had a plan. And Paul says, hey, I'm trying to apprehend that which I was apprehended for. He apprehended me for a purpose, and I'm trying to get and get, grasp and, and gather and take that purpose and get a hold of it and fulfill that purpose God apprehended me for. It's very deep. Second Timothy chapter 1. Let me just give you another verse about this. 2 Timothy chapter 1. In verse 9, Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, um, which it was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So, <clears throat> God apprehended me for a reason. God apprehended you for a reason. You got to apprehend, and that's your job to apprehend God's will for your life and His purpose for your life. And and I'm going to get five people coming to the service, Pastor. I don't know my purpose in my life. Look, just just start with what you know. Most common most common problem people they want to know the spooky will of God, but they haven't done the revealed will of God. Lord, tell me what I'm. What, what is my, what is my, your will for my life? He says, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Abstain from fornication. So there's a start. Go to church. He already revealed his will in his, will in his word. Pray, love your neighbor, be good to your family. There's, there's a bunch of things he revealed. Start with that. You'll find out the spookier stuff when you've done the revealed stuff. Okay. Um, and, 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 but just start with doing what God wants you to do. He has a purpose for you. You find, and this is a really deep statement. I've said this statement all over the world, and it, 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 it sounds really simple, but it's actually very profound. You find the will of God in the will of God. That's where you find the will of God. And I, I wouldn't know the will of God today and the things I'm supposed to do next year if I wasn't the will of God today. 
okay? I, I, just stay in the will of God, and he'll, he'll and it's, he's got a plan. And isn't it nice when you're working for somebody who's got a plan? You ever work for someone who doesn't got a plan? <laughs> you ever worked? You ever, you ever been in a, underneath somebody who doesn't got a plan? It's frustrating. You're not, you're not working for somebody that way. Before the world began, he had a purpose for you. You're not an accident, and he's got a plan for you. And Paul's trying to apprehend that. <clears throat> All of us have a plan. God is trying to capture us for his cause. That's what all those verses in Ephesians said. His will, his purpose. It's he's, he's got a plan. And he's got people for you to reach only you can reach. He's got a place for you to live that you're going to make a difference there. He's got, uh, he's, got, he's got your marriage figured out, and you're supposed to marry, and why, and your kids, and what they're supposed to be like. And he's got a purpose for your children. And he's got a purpose for, for you being in his will. And, and, and just, just you'll find it. It's amazing. Number two. Being apprehended for a great cause is amazing. You say, man, what do you mean God's going to grab me and say, I got you and I got something for you to do? That's amazing. And it's a wonderful thing because the God of the universe who has a plan for you and his plans are beyond comprehension and they're eternal and the rewards and blessings of them will last forever. I was thinking how to illustrate that of, of God trying to apprehend someone for the, his great plans and how he messed that up so bad and how he missed out on that. It's like somebody who's got this perfect home and have waited years and years and years and their kids are the right age and they've set everything up at home and they bought the stuff and now they're going to get the puppy they've always dreamed of. And they've got a great life for this puppy and this puppy's going to be spoiled and wonder, it's going to be wonderful. And they go to the, to the pound, and they see it. And there they, right when they see it, all of them know, there's that, that's our puppy. That's the one we've always wanted. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And they know it. And they go, and they say, okay, go pick your puppy. You paid for it. And they go in, and the puppy runs away from them. And they say, no, puppy, if you knew your kennel, if you knew the things we have for you, if you know the toys we have, and, and, and if you knew the, the, the fun we're going to have in the training and the adventures we're going to have and the things we want to do with you, we're going to rent hotels that have to have dogs. We're going to do this and that and the other thing, and we're going to do all that stuff. We're going to buy you mittens and a Seahawks jersey and all that stuff. And the puppy's like, and runs away. If it only knew the great life and the great plans you had for that puppy, it would come right into your arms. If you knew how much it'd be loved. And that's a horrible illustration because it's better than that. And, and God knows more than we do because that puppy could be horrible, like mine. And, uh, and, 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 and you could, but God's got it all figured out because he knows you because he formed you for it. He formed you for that purpose. So it's going to be the best thing in the world for you. It's going to be great. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. Show you this here. So Paul's trying to apprehend that which he's apprehended for. You get the phrase now? Thank you, Derek. I'm glad you did. And uh, very good. How many of you get the phrase that I may apprehend that which I'm apprehended for? Say amen. amen. Elbow the person next to you. Okay, good. All right, 2 Corinthians and chapter 5. <clears throat> In verse 14, it's good to be apprehended for a good cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Well, there's a word right there, constrain. Sunek, suneko. It means to hold, to compress, to arrest. Be taken with. When it says, look, it constrains me. It's got me handcuffed. The love of Christ is so strong that I have to do these things. It's like a mom saying, I love my child so much, I have to take care of them. Okay, that's a good thing. It's a fulfilling thing. The love of Christ constraineth us, because with us judge, if one man died for all, then we're all dead. And he which died for all, watch this, and, and he, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again whoa 
It says Christ died, and that love of Christ constrains you not to live for yourself anymore, but to live for him who loved you and died for you. That love of Christ brings you into that. Continues on. Um, Wherefore, henceforth, knowing no man after the flesh, um, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And so we, um, uh, we have been set free to do that and to serve God, and, and we are captured by the love of Christ. And that's a good thing, like the puppy. It's a good thing. We are bound. We're being held to God's will by God's love. When you fall in love with God, you're tied to God. No one can take you away. Uh, a profound biblical song is Come Thou Fount. Come Thou Fount, very blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Uh, uh, streams of mercy, uh, never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. It says, uh, it says, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. But it says, uh, may it bind my wandering heart to thee. That I need to be constrained by spiritual things. And, 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 and may thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee, like a chain and a handcuff hooking me to a pole. May the, may the love of Christ and God's goodness, may it apprehend me and tie me to God that I can't get away because I love him too much. May I be apprehended. Apprehended for a good thing is a wonderful thing. And you want that. Nehemiah was apprehended by a cause. Paul was apprehended by a cause. Jesus was apprehended by a cause. Uh, uh, Daniel was apprehended by a cause. You find people in the Bible had a cause bigger than them, and they were happy in it and fulfilled and did great things. God made them for that. And we get a cause that's bigger than us. Number three, back to Philippians. We'll finish up there. Philippians chapter uh, 3. Let's go back uh, and, and, and notice in verse 12 and 13, um, <clears throat> to get there, you must be forward-looking because you're not going to always succeed. Verse 12, not as though I had already attained. I'm not there yet. Either we're already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am also are also I am apprehended in Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. So I'm not there yet. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's, we, we quote that verse all the time about all kinds of things. But he's talking about that which he's apprehended for, the will of God for his life. And he's then pressing toward that. But in to order to do that, you must be forward thinking. He says, I have not apprehended. But forget that. I'm pushing. Too many people, <laughs> too many people start out here and they stumble backwards. And they're like, oh, look what I did. No. Quit looking and looking backward. Forgetting those things which are, be, uh, which are behind, I'm reaching forth into those things which are before. <laughs> Man, if I could take, even in this, this God, I could take a third of you, and I could go, and I could wipe out your memory of everything before tonight, and say, you can't think about your past. You can't think about your failures. It just, it's gone away. You would be so much of a better Christian. If you had no memories of anything in the past, and you just said, oh, what's the Bible say? Oh, I'm, we're more than conquerors in him that loved us. Well, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. I guess God must have, whatever I did, God must have forgiven me for it, so I'm just going to serve God. <laughs> Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Looking backward is not where it is. 
If you look in your rearview mirror while you're driving, you're not going to do well. You're going to crash a lot. And you've got to be forward thinking to find God's will. Because it's progressive. I, look, I, have, I, have, I, I do not believe by God's grace and God's clarity and God's kindness and God's Holy Spirit. I don't think I've ever missed God's will for my life in anything. I think I'm, I've been in God's will my entire spiritual life. And I have been taken to amazing places and God's done them. It's all him. But I've not missed it. I, I'm, one, I'd be scared to death to miss, miss the will of God. Number two, I don't want to miss it because it's so exciting. Okay? God's got incredible things. But I still don't know the rest of God's will for my life. I got to keep pressing forward. I know up until now what I was supposed to do, what I was made for. I know that. I know, I know what God's done so far. But I got things to do still. And if you just keep on looking backward, and if I said, oh, you know, look, what I, look where we are. Look what I've done. Look what I've done good. Look what I've done bad. I'm not going to keep pressing. Paul said, hey, I've not yet apprehended. I haven't attained that for which I was I got apprehended for. God captured me, and I haven't got that done yet. I haven't got exactly, I haven't finished. Now, 2 Timothy 4, then he was done. He said, I apprehended. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. I've fought a good fight. I did what God had for me. And that's, so you want to be that. And he says, I count not myself to have apprehended. I haven't gotten it yet. And that's okay. If Paul at this point of writing the book of Philippians with who he was and how amazingly godly he was, and he says, I have not yet apprehended. This is not the start of his ministry, folks. This is way in. This is miracle, miracle, miracle. And he says, I have not yet apprehended. Then you don't need to feel too bad if you haven't gotten there yet. Just keep pushing. Forget the things which are behind. Forget your failures. Forget the past. And find, because God's got a beautiful, important plan for you. But you got to apprehend that which we apprehended. He says, I got it for you, but you got to go get it. He says, I'm not, I'm not just hand it all to you. So, so, so become what I want you to be and try to apprehend it. And he says, I press. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Whatever that is for me. In Christ Jesus, I want to get there. So I forgot those things which are behind. I'm reaching forth into those things which are before. To get there, you must, must be forward-looking. And go forward and apprehend. Start apprehending. So God apprehended you. You're here. Good deal. Now, go apprehend. What he apprehended you for? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word tonight, Lord, as we... Oh, Lord, just think about that word apprehended, Lord. Uh, sometimes it's grasping. Sometimes it's comprehending. Sometimes it's taking. But, Lord, you apprehended us for a reason. Lord, we, we see this throughout the scripture, Lord. We see it, you, you teaching us these things. And we see that Paul was pushing towards something. And he had not yet apprehended that which he's apprehended for. Thank you for this truth, Lord. Thank you for speaking to me about it and helping me to understand it. And I pray tonight that we would forget those things that are behind and reach forth into those things which are before. You've got a plan for us still. And I pray we'd apprehend it. Whatever that is, it's got to be wonderful. And Lord, you told Paul <laughs> at his salvation what he was doing, what he was going to do. We didn't all get that, Lord. And I pray, but each one of us would be pushing and finding your beautiful will. You made us for a purpose. You had a purpose before the world began. And I pray we'd get that. Thank you for these truths in Jesus' name.